Hello ladies and gents, I'm the Dapper Rat, and today I wanted to talk about For Honor, specifically its staleness, repetitiveness, and balancing. Now, originally I was going to do a video like this, however, as I went through my drafts, rewriting, and analyzing, I found that I came up with a solution that I myself wouldn't have liked to see. The gist of my suggestion was that characters should have their kits limited to certain special moves and properties based on their role. This was to bring back that RPG feeling, trying to balance tanks to be anti-gankers and assassins to be gankers, with everyone else in between. Trying to fit it this way made sense to me. The big guy can fight multiple people, but the little guy is better at assisting. However, this meant that pins would only make sense on assassins and hype armor would only make sense on tanks which would also mean that some of the most iconic moves from tanks wouldn't fit their role, and Berserker as a character wouldn't exist. So, I decided to go back to the drawing board. After all, the last thing I want to do is remove from the game, and clearly, these characters all fit and make sense in their respective roles. Originally, I thought maybe if I simply swapped what they should do, it would fit better than my initial feelings. Tanks being a bastion to help their team and ganks, and assassins being support characters to help the tank, but in turn make the tank weak on their own. This seemed like a good idea at first, especially since that's what all the other RPGs are doing. The tank is your front line that creates a vision or play style and others follow suit to help achieve that vision, but this also wouldn't work in For Honor. See, here's the problem. If there was a single game mode, this would be a much easier balance to do and extremes could be easier explored like other games. However, in For Honor, every hero has to be viable in a duel, 4v4, and objective game modes. If balanced for breach, then powerful tanks would be less of a problem since you could limit their movement and other attributes, meaning having fast characters to do other objectives would be ideal. But then in Dominion and Duels, you would see a flood of tanks as movement no longer matters in those game modes, and it's all about your viability. And thus, a criteria is created. We need one, to limit character movesets to give them weaknesses and strengths to overcome or take advantage of and two, create roles viable in all game modes, but not oppressive in a single one. And how do we satisfy these two rules? With better description and vision. See, on the hero screen of For Honor, they give you a bit of information, but to new players, it can be confusing what exactly is meant, and to veteran players, it's ignored completely. This is because there is nothing cohesive between these labels. Shinobi and Ushia play completely different, so why are they both assassins? Berserker is short range, but clearly has larger hitboxes than others without that description. And if anyone could tell me what the difficulty rating is even referring to, then I'll gladly tell you where, in my opinion, a hero would seem to fit on that scale. Perhaps it's time we abandon the outdated terms and update them to what's more commonly used to describe a character, and be sure to use language that can convey this to newer players. From what I can tell, there are four types of battles in For Honor. A duel, a teamfight, a gank, and an anti-gank. We've already established that every character has to be viable in a duel, therefore that won't be a descriptive option, leaving us with gankers, anti-gankers, and teamfighters. Now, understandably, new players might not know what ganking is, so other grammar can be used to describe these roles as long as they convey the same information. This new descriptive changes better fit characters, allows you to attribute and understand other characters before playing them, and doesn't change the feel a character gives. For example, someone that plays Lawbringer would see that he is a disabler and a team fighter. Then, using that information can understand the playstyle of Shigoki, who is also a disabler, but is a ganker and anti-ganker. As another example, Berserker's kit is poor at best for an assassin, however, he fits the role of an anti-ganker and a team fighter quite well, and this description doesn't conflict with his lightweight harasser feel unlike simply calling them a vanguard or a hybrid wood. I also find that changing these labels is important as it gives a guideline on whether a character is actually weak or not. If a character is supposed to be good at ganking, then you can't complain when you aren't winning every 1v4 you run into on your own. Finally, this change in categorization would be able to withhold my original thoughts explained at the beginning of the video. Finally, with a recategorization, we can attribute special properties to specific roles. Take this graph for example. On each corner, we have anti-gankers, gankers, and teamfighters. Using this, we could overlay properties to each section as well as decide what properties are too important for duels to give to any one side. Once these properties are decided, they can then be categorized by oppressiveness in order to balance properly. Believe it or not, it's completely okay for a character to have every single property in the game, however the balance of that would require the more oppressive properties to be hard to access, 
successfully use, or have a huge detriment on failed use. What's not okay is giving a character a bunch of oppressive properties as a second part of their infinite chain, or giving a character neutral access to property that can be easily exploited. The deviation of using these properties is what can give characters a unique feel and more importantly, hopefully get the game devs to, you know, look at niche properties. That being said, it's all I really have for today. I think I did rather well covering character design problems, but obviously that's a small portion of the problem in For Honor. Now then, let me know in the comments what you guys think, and until the next video, farewell ladies and gents.